Hey everyone, how are you? <laughs> a bit chilly out here. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about leaving the building. Are those to those who have left the building, the church building, uh, we want to give kind of a balanced perspective on this because we wholeheartedly love the church mm -hmm. and the church's people. Yes. Protocols, processes, structures, doctrines, and all that kind of thing is where we get into a little bit of trouble, don't we? Mm -hmm. So I wrote this quote uh, this just this morning on Facebook, and it says this, To all of you who left the church building over all the obvious flaws, mistreatment, and religious protocols that are known, I want to encourage you that you haven't left Christ. Yes. He is simply stripping you down to authenticity. Mm. Believe me, at some point he will touch you deeply so that you can go back in and show them what a real non-religious love looks like and feels like. Now let, let me explain this a little bit. <laughs> uh, back when I said to all those who left the church building over all the obvious flaws, mistreatment, and religious protocols, what I mean by that, <laughs> bless you, what, what I mean by that is, hey, we're all flawed, okay? We are, we're all growing, we all have issues that God is working on. But what I'm mainly talking about here is uh, those that have encountered mistreatment, a spiritual abuse, controlling dominant personalities that have left them shipwrecked. The counterfeit and, of Yeah, things. the counterfeit, or they just haven't felt utilized year after year after year for the value and gift they are. Hmm. And so people have walked out of the building, but they have not left God. They have not left their relationship with Christ. And so George Barna wrote a few books on this, but... George Bonner wrote one years ago about how many people have left the building, mm -hmm. and it was millions of people. Yeah. And so he said, how can millions of people be deceived by the devil? And so he, he asked the question honestly. And it's, it is a good question because if there's millions of people that have walked out, we have everything from pastors and leaders saying, oh, they're listening to the devil, they're deceived, to... Um, people that have really been traumatized and wounded and they're never going back and we know yeah, that the church is not a building yeah we know it's not a building it's just a place where we meet right mm -hmm. and so but the church is a living moving organism called you called me <laughs> yeah, and so with one head yeah. hmm. so remember I wonder who's that who the head is yeah, who the head is <laughs> who's the head it's like the old saying, who's your daddy? Well, who's, who's the head? Yeah. The head is Christ oh, Jesus, is Christ. Or, it's a, or it's a man or a woman trying to control the whole thing uh, and, and uh, live by those doctrinal issues. So what happened in our lives? Let's mm. give a snapshot of what happened in our lives years ago for all those that don't understand where we're coming from. Again, we love the bride of Christ. We love the church. It's yeah. people. And we're helping in one right now up in Canada. So Yeah, and it's and it's really there um, it's a church, you know, we, we call them church. We get hung up on names, yeah. right? Church slash building. Yeah. A church <laughs> is the church. It's it's people that we're mm -hmm. where we meet in the building and we gather. And and the scripture is very clear about forsaking not the assembly of yourselves together, but people use that as a as a battering ram or a hammer over people's lives. See see it says right here. Forsake not the assembly. You have to go to church. You have to be there on Sunday morning. You have to be there on Friday and Saturday and Wednesday and every other day or you're backslidden. You're listening to the sinner. devil, pal. Hey, sinner. You wicked backslidden sinner, you. And so people use that as an excuse to beat others up. Yep. And, you know, let's, let's get really real, guys. Love does no harm. Doesn't shame. Love does shame not shame. Game. And what happened with us years ago, this was the Lord that actually drew us out. So mm -hmm. back in about 2003, we were part of a whole ministry or we were heading up the prophetic this and that and we were actively involved and worship, and team, worship team, team, all of those things. And the Lord, we were getting more and more frustrated. In fact, Amy came to the point to where she felt like she was going to have a nervous breakdown if something didn't change because of the dog and pony show, if you will. And the threats, the threats that would yeah. keep coming. I mean, anybody that's been in ministry behind the scenes, you know all these little hidden threats and controls or shamings that go on from natural man. Yeah. And so, um, hey, guys, bless you both, Pastors hey. Brian and Jean. Hey, good to, good to have you here. Thanks for tuning in. And, you know, there, there's, 
we want to say this before we jump into that. It, there's a lot of good that's going on out there. And, mm -hmm. and just because you have pastors and church buildings doesn't mean that it's all bad. And so for those of you that left the whole thing entirely, uh, assess what's really happening to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be just that you're frustrated with the protocols and processes that were in place or the wounded leaders that have been mistreating you and that's a yeah. very real thing the spiritual abuse is, is very mm -hmm. real we understand that we've been a part of uh, on the receiving end of that and uh, and but, but you've got to sit and, and discern and sift through what's really going on and and don't just throw everything out with a bathwater and paint every church as bad or every right, pastor or every is pastor. bad I mean it's like take yeah. doctors for example you know there's good doctors and there's bad doctors and it's it's usually the individual behind the title right so it's not it's necessarily the title it's the individual okay. and That's what right. they're protruding out of their own life yeah and they're and the processes and things that they've put into place and mm -hmm. so back in 03 uh, Amy's having a melt diet down and I'm I'm about ready to snap myself and we're asking the Lord what is going on what's happening I mean mm -hmm. it was it was it was a combination of many things and then when the enemy gets in there too then he just oh, makes life mind. hell and in, in the mind uh, um, and so we started asking we just said God we need help here mm -hmm. why are we feeling like we're gonna implode why do we feel like we're shutting down why yeah. does it feel like we're just becoming bitter in the church it, in ministry in, in ministry doing something that's good right yeah. and good so God. so what happens is somebody uh, Either, either handed them to us or we, we discovered these books that really helped us out. Mm -hmm. And those of you that want to know what those books are, just message us and we'll tell you. We don't want to say it out here in the public because automatically people are going to, you know, some people are going to throw us under the bus and then others are going to go, oh yeah, I've heard of that. But they were, they're good books, okay? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, there's yes. nothing weird about them. But anyway, based. scripturally based. <laughs> so they um, were really eye-opening because they were answering the prayers that we had and and one of them had to deal with the whole uh, religious system and how it's been set up from way back in Constantine's era. And then uh, another one had to deal with covering and what real genuine Christ-like covering looks like. And it has to more, more to do with love accountability than anything mm -hmm. else and not what the church has set up as, you know, I'm, uh, I'm your covering, you do what I say kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we're on this journey and back in 03, the Lord basically told us, he said, I'm going to take you away to myself for a while. I'm going to bring you to myself. And we're like, oh, cool. Yes. We get to have a vacation. Oh. We get to, you know, leave and, and uh, go have some R&R &R from this ministry thing for a while. And uh, little did we know. <laughs> An oxymoron, huh? <laughs> little did we know, 10 years later, we were uh. removed from that whole setting, being in, in that environment of doing the prophetic ministry, worship team, and all of that within mm -hmm. the religious system. And we're brought to, to him out in the, quote, people call it wilderness, but we called it intimacy with the Lord mm -hmm. to fall in love with him again. Because yeah, how many of you know that you can be in ministry and fall out of intimate love with the Lord? It becomes so driven by works and then, you know, yeah. trying to do things for God instead of with God. and working your way up the corporate Christian ladder in the church That's right. <laughs> and so we were uh, we went on this journey and we found all these like-minded people that were had been feeling the same way they had left the institutionalized mindset of the Christian Christian world and they were brought out into the vast wide open spaces of falling in love with the Lord again yeah, and we're like God's wow good graces yeah, we're like, where have you been all my life? And they thought the same way. They felt the same way. And they loved the Lord, but they didn't like what was happening in institutional Christianity. But it was scary. It was, it was really scary. scary at first. Yeah, because remember, you remember have what all happened. these doctrines and all the, the things that pastors and leaders, you know, that are trying to keep their sheep in house, you know, or whatever, are, are threatening, saying these things, what the banana that leaves the bunch always gets skinned. Uh, you know, when, you the, oh, <laughs> when you hit that when you hit skin, yeah, skin too. You hit the, peeled and skin. Even skin. Skin your knee. When you hit the brick wall, you'll be coming running back to the house. Yeah, I'm sure you guys all have your own famous quotes that you know the threats that go out. And but at the same time, we knew God was saying, "I need to pull you away to myself for a while." And for for the purpose of which we yes, found out later was, was like ten years later. Uh -huh. He told us. He he asked. He said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. We are yeah. the banana that left that bunch. Love yes. it. Yeah. 
Awesome. So, so what happened was is that he, you know, 10 years later, he said, I want you to go back in. Mm -hmm. And we're like, go back into what? And, and the Lord said, well, you know, I've, it's taken me 10 years to get the religious poo out of you. <laughs> and, and so uh, it was a stripping down. It was right? a stripping he down to strip authenticity down of, again of things, of doctrines and things that yeah. we had taken on that really weren't God's, right? It was man's doctrines, and so the remodeling uh, that was going on, restructuring, remodeling us is the first thing with the house, right? You have to tear it down first yeah. to its foundation before you can build upon it and restore it to its right to its potential and its purpose yeah so that's what was so, happening in that season for us yeah it was happening for us and, and for everybody others. it's for everybody it's different but like george barna said and wrote about it's like millions we're talking millions of people here guys yes. so if you're in institutional thinking right now and you're listening to this maybe you are the pastor that says oh look here's another one that's in rebellion talking <laughs> to us trying to tell us that it's okay to leave church and all that Listen to what we're saying, please. <laughs> what we're saying is we love church, we love people. Church is not a building. Church is a living, moving, breathing organism that shouts and screams and exudes the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, and peace, and grace, and all those wonderful things that Jesus is, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes. so what we're saying here is, is that, wait, how can millions of people be deceived? Right. And maybe maybe some of them are in there, but I can tell you this, that there's millions that God has drawn back to himself, and that's what he was doing with us. So mm -hmm. what happened was we were having this absolutely wonderful yet yet um, difficult time in the regards that we're having a wonderful time falling in love with the Lord again and having this freedom. But then at the same time, there was a dilemma of how can we contribute to the body at large? Mm -hmm. And so what, what we saw... Yeah, what we saw was there was this pendulum swing of people that left the system, if you will. You can call it what you want. Institutional mm -hmm. thinking, the system, just processes and protocols. Uh, and they would leave Religion. and then they would go have these home groups and they would swing to the other side of things. And everybody was so hurt and traumatized and wounded, they would just sit around and talk about that. And then nobody wanted to step forward to take the lead on anything, even though they had right. a gift in that area to do been so hurt by leadership right so then yeah. you're throwing everything out with the baby in the bathwater when the leadership is healthy you know yeah, you need a pioneer and a visionary and yeah and so then the other pendulum was there would they would just repeat the same woundings and and process some somebody would rise to the occasion and then they would be so hurt and traumatized yeah. that they would just begin to spread that leaven some more and so but through the midst of it all through that 10 year period or so, we met other wonderful people that were like us, that loved the Lord, but that just felt like, where, where, where's my place because of all of these scenarios happening to them with leadership? And so now, uh, the, Michael, the Lord... The Michael W. Smith song would always... <laughs> the age old song. Yeah. Roaming through the night to find my place in this Yeah, that's world. right. You start singing that a lot, right? Oh, yeah. Out in the desert. <laughs> yeah. But God and, knows and exactly what's going on. He and he's does. leading you to different places on your journey and different people, different connections, new revelation and wisdom. And Yeah, we found out during that time that we weren't actually in trouble with the Lord and yeah. that what these people told us was going to happen didn't happen. And, you know, the, the things about, you know, the devil's going to get you and all those kind of things that you're rebelling against authority and all when those controlling things. your heart things. was right, right? And that was, yeah. that was so oh, challenging because you had that shame coming in from the system saying you're, you're in sin, you're, you know. You're listening to lying demons and all that. We heard lifted, it all. You're out like a loose cannon, whatever. And you, but you know the Lord's voice yourself and that yeah. he was drawing you away out or, or moving you to the next season in your journey or to the next place of people yeah and for what he's setting up in in, in what's happening today too mm. so a lot of times what God was doing in in a time frame especially in the 2000s and some of you have gone you know you've removed yourself or God has drawn you out years ago it doesn't matter at, at different times God does different things to set them up for what is coming on the earth yeah. so in other words God 
is doing the instead right now and he has a different model one that looks like a blueprint from heaven yes. that's contrary to what institutional thinking dictates and says look Hence the here's down. here's yeah here's the here's the um, the evidence of this is that what what is what has been set up in denominationalism is there's a pastor there's a hierarchy going on maybe mm -hmm. an apostle or a prophet that calls the shots and leads the show right so they're in place and then there's this hierarchy pyramid that happens it comes down those that they trust gather around them and and really are a bunch of yes men in most cases and then everybody else gets left out to the wind as if they are less than or they're just rubbish in the corner yeah. when everybody has high value in god's eyes and, and so can hear his voice you know yeah. it's not just the pastor that can hear his voice yeah, and so God is changing things up, and he's been changing things up for quite some time so that every part has a role, you know, and, and that's, the, that's the issue is that every, every person has the voice and every person has the role, mm -hmm. right? And, and for years, um, it, it hasn't been the case because of what Constantine and others have set up. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we have it. We still have denominationalism going on. We still have hierarchy. Now, the, we can talk about hierarchy a, a little more in depth on another session here, but I'll just say this in a nutshell with hierarchy is Jesus addressed this very clearly in Scripture, and he says, he's talking to the disciples, and he says, look, you're all brothers. Yes. So don't have an elevated mindset. Mm -hmm. Look and prefer others greater than yourself. Submitting let, one to another. Yeah, the Gentiles lord it over one another. But let it not be so amongst my body, in other words. Because there is no hierarchy in the anatomy of the body from the neck down. There's different responsibilities, just the head. right? There's higher responsibilities. That's right. But we should ultimately all be listening to the head, which is Christ. Yeah. And, and the gifts. And preferring one another. Yeah, and we, we agree, we believe that the fivefold ministry exists, oh, yeah. the fivefold gifts of grace and all of that. We're, we're not denying it because we is one. <laughs> we is a part of that. Yes. You know, we're apostolic and prophetic. For the and building and equipping of that's the right. church, of the body of Christ. That's its purpose. That's its purpose. And, to, and what happens on a foundation is that when a foundation is laid after the structure is built, you don't really see that foundation. That's really an, an apostolic role is to lift. is to lift up and to be a strong support and to be a mothering and a fathering kind of nature and nurturing yeah. uh, persona about their lives. So what happened uh, during that period of time is not only did we, we fall in love with the Lord again and find others of like mind, mm -hmm. but we also were stripped of the religious stuff down to being authentic once again and so god put us around a bunch of unbelievers in the working world took us out of the ministry that we were doing put us around a bunch of unbelievers for years mm -hmm. so that we can, can become relatable and real yes, again right how many of you have lost the relatability because you're so saturated in ministry within the institutional thinking and mindset that says, oh, I got to separate from the wicked. I got to keep myself from being defiled from those, those wretched unbelievers. And so you're put on a pedestal. Yeah. Us and them mentality. Us and them. And there is no us and them. There's, there is, there is uh, one group called humanity. The and only difference is we've made a decision. Them. Yes. Some have just forgotten who they were, you know, and it just, and the Lord made the way for them to choose to come back. Right. That's it. And but who so, created them? God created every single person on this earth. And so, you know, yeah, it's just we're all made right. in his image. Yeah. Humanity is made in his image. It's just they haven't been converted or transformed yet by the love of Christ. And so the, the institutional world mindset says makes them enemies. Makes them enemies, you know? But that's a whole whole yeah. other subject. So <laughs> back, back to back to our journey and, and the quote that I spoke of here which is really interesting. Um, part of it, let me go back to this, the quote I put on Facebook. Um, he is simply stripping us down to authenticity. Believe me, at some point he will touch you so deeply that you can go back in and show them, the people, what a real non-religious love looks like and feels like. So back in 2012 or so, or 11, God, um, we had felt like, well, hey, you know, we were, we were going through some challenging things on our journey, like most people. 
and during that period of time and then we saw a prophetic meeting that was going on in the location we were at we thought hey let's let's go over there maybe we'll get some encouragement you know so and then we also felt like the lord said i want you to go back in yeah and yeah. so it had been stirring in us and it had been stirring in us so we go into this three-day meeting it's a prophetic meeting mm -hmm. and this prophetic powerhouse of a woman comes marching right yeah it makes a beeline, beeline towards us the other side of the building over to yeah. yeah, and she goes, I've been waiting yeah. for you for three days. I saw you three days ago in the spirit. I've been waiting for you. And then she went into the Moses call. You've been called like a Moses to let my people go, to call them forth and to yeah, set them free. Yeah, called to that huge harvest. And she just just a powerful up word. Just faith and just boom, 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 boom. Yeah. <laughs> and so that was, a, that was a real confirmation for us that we were uh, called to set people free from religious thinking and religious mindsets to be relatable again and to fall in love with again uh, with the lord again yeah and to pe with people having a love for people compassion again. compassion deep compassion especially when you have to overcome you know the rejections the betrayals the offenses the the heart-wrenching of relationships being torn of he said she said and the you know being having to be loyal to whoever in that situation and just you know going through those ebbs and flows of the emotions and really really testing your faith testing what you believe oh yeah because and, of, and overcoming that and choosing to keep leaning into the lord leaning into his heart and not becoming bitter and um that's holding resentment that's you know one. and unforgiveness because that will keep you out you guys all know that it will keep you out and an open target for the enemy in that area keep so. you isolated and that's that's not the answer either for you that are thinking well i'm never going back to that well never say never and it's not that you're going to go back and and be of the same mind or the same heart that you were coming the out old ways the old things. ways of things because god wants to do this he wants to mm -hmm. show his people because he loves them so much the instead like graham cook says yeah. he wants to show them the difference the model of someone that has had all the religious junk lifted but has gone back into real pure unadulterated love mm -hmm. that the love that believes the best and hopes yeah. the best about people and wisdom and a broader perspective <clears throat> because you know as you guys know it's hard to see things when you're in it right and then the lord That's right. draws yeah. you out and all of a sudden unveils things to you you're like oh my gosh how did I not see that? Or how did I not see this manipulation? Or how did I not see I was losing myself? Or I was yeah. so morphing and trying to shift myself to fit into this thing over here or what I thought God was calling me for, for ministry. And, and God is, you know with God, it's never what you think. And that's why you live a let go life. And, and flow with him because he's always yeah. expanding bringing you into new revelations and and for and, what he's preparing know. the the church for worldwide for leaders yeah. and I, I want to speak to, to leaders for a second here if you're an apostle or a prophet pastor evangelist or teacher God has been trying to get through to you if he hasn't already mm -hmm. to, to help you to see and understand of what he's positioning you for for a global sense of a move that he's doing mm -hmm. in the area of preparing his bride in intimacy to bring her back to intimacy but also to prepare her for the wedding of all weddings yes. and that's why you've been cultivated that's why he's been dealing yes. with you in such a way cleansing that will culture. cleansing your own personal culture yeah to bring you back into alignment with his heartbeat the yes. pulsating ravenish heart of who he is Single towards origin. his bride yeah so Not we mixed. During that period of time, um, during that period of time that uh, <laughs> we were going through this, uh, you know, this this time of being uh, out with him and others of like mind, we would hear it all. We would hear things like, "Oh, well, what church do you go to?" Well, um, we are the church, um, <laughs> and and but that doesn't mean that we isolate ourselves. That doesn't mean that we're alone. We have other like minds out oh, here. There's yeah. plenty of them. We kept in we kept in connection, yeah. and fellowship, and all that. That's you know? right. But it didn't look like the the regular mindset of those that said that we have to be in a certain building on Sunday morning. Here's the here's the issue with that mindset is that. When you're veiled, when you're covered, when it's cloaking your mind, like Amy said, you can't see the reality of who you really are. Yeah. Because it is a veiling of deception. Tell them about, you know, when we first had stepped out of it, 
or we were we were kind of deciding, you know, of stepping out of that season. We were being in the system, and we came to a small group, and there was this wise man, oh, yeah, yeah, prophetic yeah, yeah, yeah. man, that approached you. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes he listens into it. I I love him. Yes. His name's David. I'll just I'll just tell you that. Hey Zane. So David. Kevin on David there. David was. Um, so, yeah. David is a prophet, a genuine prophet in the kingdom, and he's this this older, wise sage. I call him. <laughs> uh, and this is this is what happened uh, back when we first had had walked out of the whole uh, religious system, and we were we were asking the Lord. You know, we were still we were still cloaked and veiled with this whole mentality of well, like, oh I got to be there on Sunday morning, or I'm in trouble with God. I'm going to get the smackdown kind of thing. Um, we went to this home group meeting because we had we had heard about well, there, there's some amazing things happening. They all love one another. They really value each other and, and that. So we went to this home group meeting, and uh, this religious thing comes flying out of my mouth because it was what I was used to. I said the conversation happened. We were having a good time there, and I was I'm all I'm all in suspicion mode. And yeah, because you trained is, right. This it's, is back in. Oh. This is back in like 2003 or something it's like that. it's prophetic, but it's suspicion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm back in there and I, I'm all like thinking, well, are these guys deceived because they left the institutional church and they're having a home group? They're in rebellion against their pastor kind of thing, you know? Because that's what I was told. That's what I was trained, trained with. And so I'm sitting there going, oh God, oh God, help me to see. Don't let me be deceived. Don't let me be deceived. Help me to see. And so all of a sudden, what blurts out of my mouth, I said this towards this prophet that had left a long time ago out of that whole mindset and mentality and got found freedom. He goes, um, he goes, uh, no, I said, I said, well, who's your covering and who's your accountability? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and he go, he looks the right at me. <laughs> he, goes, <laughs> he looks right at me and he goes, listen, I want to tell you something. He goes, when you get that religious demon off your back, you'll understand it fully. And, and then he slapped you on the back, and then he rubs you. my back, and then he comes Gave up to me. Well, then he comes up to me with tears in his eyes, yeah. because he's now a father, and he's and he's compassion. he's saying his compassion it's welled up in him, and he and he just said, "Hey, you're gonna understand one day." And then he kisses me on the cheek like a good father would, and right then and there. Now, at first it stung. I'm like, "Who the heck do you think you are, dude? <laughs> you know, you need to submit to your pastor." Kind I don't of know thing. about you. Yeah, I don't know about you, and. And, um, and what, but it really did is it rocked me. It rocked mm -hmm. my whole world because it set me on a path of total and complete freedom. Yeah. Knowing that. To really search out the yeah, truth. Yeah. Knowing that I did have a religious demon on my back and I went to the Lord with it. And I said, Lord, do I have a religious devil on my back? Do I, am I bound by religious thinking? And the Lord said, you sure are. And I'm going to strip you down to authenticity once again, because you were authentic, but you got wrapped up in the system and it made you inauthentic. It made yeah. you ineffective, it made you impotent, but yet you thought you were doing a lot of wonderful things. And there was some good that was done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, God's merciful and, and the gift is an operation. It's, it's without repentance and all that good stuff. But it was difficult. It was a challenge. And some of you listening to this, I just know, <laughs> will be adamant. Some pastor will come across this and say, um, yeah, buddy, you're in rebellion. Who are these guys? Still, who are you? Who do you think you are? <laughs> That's okay. Exactly. That's okay. We bless you and love you anyway. And we pray that the veil comes off of your mind and that you discover the freedom that we've been enjoying for years. Now, yes, for those even of back you... back in Jesus' day or Paul's day, remember where it said some had filtered in because they wanted to as spies because of the freedom that they were experiencing, the disciples and in the epistles at the time, or was in the book of Acts or one of those, yeah. you know, and... They were filtering in because they wanted to see this freedom. That yeah, they that they, in. they 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 had uh, the Pharisees, been experiencing. You know, yeah, come in there. And it's a Pharisaical mindset. It really is. It's it's filtering in. Both and, believe in God, right? Both yeah. believe in God, but you got this. Yeah, you guys know. Yeah. So so for those of you that join later and you're listening to this, <laughs> let, let's let's recap a minute. We love church. We absolutely love the church, which is you, you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, yes. and me, and her, and every other in individual that believes we are the church. And we just happen to meet in a place called a building mm -hmm. where we get into problems. And we, it was when we have motherships and, and daughterships, <laughs> you know, the mothership that says you have to be accountable to me no matter what, or you're in trouble with God kind of thing. Along with your 
thousand dollars to pay annually. Yeah, thousand dollar annual payments and all of that. But anyway, now, now there's the good and the bad to yes. that. All right, we're not we're not blasting all of it because Just test there the fruits, is right? accountability yes. that is through love and care and grace and nurture and value. But accountability is not demanding that you submit to me with no relationship with no relationship with not knowing each other that's not that's not i repeat that is not I accountability repeat. that is that is right in god's eyes that is that is approved approved of by heaven accountability is look i love you you love me we're a happy, happy family, family. <laughs> I love you, you value me, I value you, and we will go to bat for one another and we will lay down our lives for one another because yep. we're friends and we have the love of Christ yes. richly moving and living through our hearts. It's mm -hmm. not you pay a certain amount of money and, I and talk I'll to you once give a you year. this, this, and this, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you, you once name. a year. Yeah. No. You're buying a name then. Or what that's called is just I need money, so I want you to join my... my uh, my process and my protocol here okay so let's let's look at um, let's look at further on this quote uh, that I did on Facebook it says so that you can go back in and show them what a real non-religious love looks like okay let's let's talk about that a little bit more you know one thing that we found uh, while we've been being stripped down to, back to oh, our, the joy. Who, who we really are oh. uh, the joys of it is that you find out and discover that you really don't have a need. Yes, that's good. You really don't have a need for doing the stuff, mm -hmm. the ministry stuff. God has taken away this this the false identity. The false identity of I, I I need to in order to be approved of by God. Mm -hmm. I need to because if I don't do this, I'm going to die. I need to because I'm just compelled by this. Mm -hmm. Now, there is truth that you can be compelled with a burning message. Yeah. But having a need to be a pastor, having a need to fulfill acceptance. a void, yeah, you're you're trying to fill a void of, of of uh, this identity that's lost, or or you're an orphan. You have an yeah. orphan mindset under and, the cover of ministry. Yeah, and, and, and having man, praise of man. It's so dangerous because it's, it gets really dangerous when it's under a good thing, right? But really, underneath, you're you're still trying to fill that void of importance, and. Yeah, that, that can be dangerous. But God's so good. He's such a good father, right? Where he draws you out. He strips you down because it's the good carpenter. So he's such a good carpenter, right? So he starts sanding that stuff, uh, planing you, stripping it off, and really starts pulling out your potential. The, the, the like massive a, treasure, yeah. Yeah, like a violin. If you're a violin, you know, you may think you're, you're it, but you're just the stump, right? And then God takes you out, starts cutting things off, and then forming and shaping you in the process yeah. and you have to receive and yeah. just allow that's right and so I can just hear somebody saying well what about fellowship what what, what do I do there I, I need fellowship I have to have fellowship well we are the body and we do connect and we do encourage one another we exhort we encourage and all of those wonderful things and we help train and equip people if you're in the fivefold expression yes. and all the rest well all you have to do, all that's necessary, is ask the Lord, Lord, where where are the people that you've connected me to? And and be open to not just wandering into some building that is part of a denomination. Or it may be that. Yeah, God may be just... sending you right back in to be the instead to be mm -hmm. to show the difference, right? Mm -hmm. But it's all being led by your best friend yeah. now because you can hear him again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then being being led into Leans that. Leanings and promptings. Oh, to the journey. Yeah. So but it's when... a great time. It's a great time right now to be alive. I mean, this whole last decade, most people will yeah. agree that it has been that stripping down and the pulling away it's been and the separation. It, it's yeah, for, it's for been a lot a, of people. A life or death. A lot of a lot of us have battled with major depression, oppression, hope deferred, uh, despair, even suicidal thoughts. Uh, just you name it, the emotions just getting cleansed, your soul, the layers of your soul just getting cleansed of all these deposits from childhood, from the yeah. religious system, and to, to where God is, like we keep saying, bringing you down to the foundation. So it's a great time right now. I know a lot of you have felt the shift this year 
of, of God is calling people back in to build now according to his plans, his ways, his, his direction. Yeah, because we've, we've been broken in such a good way. It's like a horse, you know, where mm -hmm. it may be the most gorgeous, beautiful horse there is, but until it's broken in and useful to the rider, what good is it other than to look at? Now we have learned to be broken in in a yeah. good way to where we yield and we listen and we move with him to build yeah, the right to have the rhythm the, 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 the right rhythm way the flow. and here and, and here's the, here's the thing too is that something has to occur in order for his church worldwide to be known by their love for one another yeah uh, you ever really sit and think her. about that something has to occur and so it starts with us as individuals and some people are looking for this massive revival to break out and they're just holding out and holding out um, and, and you know, it, it, it's it, an event. Yeah, it God may. Doesn't want just an event. Yeah, it may happen, mm -hmm. th but it's not going to happen the way we think. I'm a firm believer. We we both are that the revival that we're looking for is not going to just happen the way it always has happened before. Mm -hmm. It starts with you and I inside of us being yeah. transformed, like she just described. To where that all the religious junk that we've been used to is removed and we can truly love one another. How about that mm -hmm. for a revival? Yeah, maturity, mature yeah. sons. Instead of hot spots breaking out and then something just happens. Well, then most people, when they walk out of that meeting, they're just as tore up as when they came in. They may have had a high for a little bit and then they call out a revival. But when they walk out, they're not transformed. They yeah. just had an emotional high. Right, because nothing, Let's can, get real. nothing can substitute the training and equipping of the Holy Spirit when he comes in and he mentors you and trains you to become a mature son and, and that's, that's right. what's been happening right this training and breaking over the last decade to where we are really starting to move with him so the Holy Spirit can start connecting us all together as one body all over the planet maturity and yep. I tell you a, a great book one of the best books I've seen that just under, you know breaks down the process is Watchman Nee the age-old book Watchman Nee release of the spirit you know, yeah. to where you're, he's breaking your outer man, the flesh, our opinions, all these things, breaking them so that our spirit man can come forth and actually lead. And, and he shares in that book how it's so easy to yeah. connect with others that have had their spirit man broken off. I mean, their, their flesh man broken off. So they instantly connect spirit to spirit. But someone who hasn't, it takes you a while to connect with them because they're still operating in their soul and flesh and their opinions and all this stuff. That's and right. so that's why Holy Spirit's been really working with us. And it's so good. It's so beautiful. We can be the expression and, and be transparent of Him. It's heaven culture, heaven on earth coming and flowing through us. So we're connecting yeah, with Him. That's right. And so... Why is it? This this has really bothered us over the years when we hear of pastors committing suicide. Oh, yeah. Is it is that not just the craziest thing mm -hmm. or what? Pastors, it's like it's like becoming more prevalent than ever and younger and younger. You know, just not too long ago there's a 38-year-old pastor from a big mega church back east in eastern United States that uh, ended it all because of an affair. Well, why couldn't you go to somebody and share that affair with them without being judged? You know, is that part of it? Uh, there, there's so many elements within the religious mm -hmm. system that does not afford for you to be real and open and transparent without the fear of being judged or ostracized or thrown out on your head. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I know in the Word of Faith, um, Word of Faith has done some great things, but I know being a part of that years ago, one of the things was you couldn't even admit if you had a cold because then you weren't in faith. Because you had no faith. You know, if I have a cold, I can't admit that because there's something wrong. <laughs> and you learn to live in denial. <laughs> I mean, come on. How about being truthful and saying, look, I, I may have a cold, but I'm believing to be healed from it. And so, you know, it's those kind of things and, and, and the suicide and all of that. Uh, what does pressure. that say it's to the so world? Pressure. What does it say to the world uh -huh. when we're, we're offing ourselves as believers and, and if you have, and, and we've just dissected this, and, and if you whittle it down and get real simple about it, if there's one man or one woman calling the shots of a mega church, and they've got yes people around them that are doing their bidding for them, then you've got all this immense pressure on one of the fivefold expressions that it was never designed to handle a foundational leadership pillar uh, mm -hmm. function. 
path. And, and you know, a, a, apostles man. and prophets, it, like Ephesians says, the apostles and prophets are designed in such a way, the function, okay? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about titles. We're not getting hung up on titles. We're talking about a function and an expression. Uh, apostle and prophet is designed to hold the weight of a foundational kind of thing to, in order to disperse the expressions to all of the other fivefold operations mm -hmm. together as a family and a team dynamic. Yes. So if you have a mega church, for example, some of you don't believe in mega churches, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, influence, okay? Influence. Let's just say yeah. influence with people. You have influence, and you have two, three, four, five thousand people that you're influencing because they're drawn to your to your expression, right? What if you had five of those expressions or more within that realm, so that the pastor doesn't have to go and feel the pressure so much to where he goes and kills himself? Mm -hmm. I mean, this should not be happening. And so, thankfully, things are shifting. Like yes. Amy said, they're changing, and he's been. It's been difficult. It's been challenging for some of you to to say the least. Darlene, hey. <laughs> and, and hey, Darlene and Kaliatra and all the rest joining yes. up. Thank you for tuning in. It's been challenging to say the least for people trying to hold the weight of an expression that they were never designed to. Yes. And so what God is doing now in the earth is he's been preparing people like yourselves, us, and others all over the place. And they've been in hiddenness mm -hmm. so that it'd be a one-on-one -on -one special forces type of training boot camp to get the junk out, to remove oh. the hurts and the pains and the woundings so that the fullness of Christ can enter in so that when he calls us up, people like y'all and us calls us up to go back in, so to speak, whatever that looks like. Maybe it's an expression outside of the institutional. Mm -hmm. Some of you yeah, will go back in. in. business. Some whatever. of you won't. Mm -hmm. It's an expression in business and all of the different realms, but it'll be the instead so that there can be a model that others can look to and be provoked to jealousy, number yeah. one. And we'll look like him. We'll look but, like him. We'll taste like yeah. him. And number two, it would be, yeah. it would be, um, and number two, it would be so that people can, we can be known by our love for one another. Yes. Yeah. And you know, this whole thing of us all being hidden, it's like, it's like film development, right? It's through the darkness, it's being developed until the day that it's ready and God brings it forth and shows the picture that he's been taking, right? He, yeah. he took us, he saved us, and then we went through this development process now to where we're coming forth to look like him. It's just, oh. Yeah. HD, great. full HD live yes. action. Yes, so people can taste Facebook and see that live. he is good, you know? <laughs> so, so some of you listening to this, whoever y'all are, whoever you share it with, please share this video. We, mm -hmm. we uh, would, would love that to whoever you feel like it should be shared with. But yeah. some of you all listening, you feel like, well, <laughs> I don't ever want to go back to that mess. And <laughs> it's not that you have to go back and come yeah. under anything. Or go back to the old. You and, know? Or go back to the old. That's, that's not the point, and that's not what the Father would have. But he may call you. He may, in fact, call you. To engage. To engage yeah. some of those people that you walked away from to reveal the fullness of who he is, like, like Amy was saying, the realness, the genuous, the authentic expression of who you really are in him and who he really is in you. Yeah. So, so it's an inner working, isn't it? It's, a, it's an inner working of what he's preparing for on the wedding of all weddings, the marriage mm -hmm. supper of the Lamb. And so... If we're being interwoven with him, I, I like to call it the kind of like the food coloring effect mm. where that when you when you drop food coloring into a glass of water, water, they become one. Mm -hmm. So there's an interweaving that Jesus has been doing in us so that we can move fluidly in oneness with him in step and in tune in every way of the, uh, of the expression yeah. so that on wedding day, we're actually adorned and prepared for the bride that he's always longed for to be the bride some people think it requires more prayer and more fasting and more denial of of uh of things in general and that may be true to a degree right it may be true in some cases but what he's really after is the fullness of our heart and we call it suiting up that's one expression suit up what that means is 
we're suiting up in Christ and he's he's already made the decision to become one with us and so what we're doing is we're being prepared to become the full expression of that oneness with him so that when wedding day happens we're there and we hear the we're sound there. right when he's going to the highways and byways and he's calling people in we're hearing the sound my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow that's the bottom line is yeah. you know we're following him he's our good shepherd and i just want to encourage you guys too yes. that um to as the Lord prompts and leads you, and if he has been continuing to prompt you and you've just been denying it, and that's to engage again in the gifts he's given you to bless and minister to people. And, and just say, you know what, Lord, I, I am done with resentment. I'm done with unforgiveness. Yeah. I'm done with the pain of it's betrayal. And I'm not going to let this rule my life anymore. Today, as an act of my will, I'm choosing to forgive. I'm choosing to let that stuff go. And I'm choosing to, again, engage in the gifts God's given me to bless people with. Because we have need of you. Yeah. Everybody has need of you in the body. Otherwise, there's a joint in the sinew missing. And as you engage, those things are going to fall off. and, And the right people will start coming alongside to connect with you again. You know, life is so short. We want to, we, we don't want to let things hold us captive or hold us back anymore. No, we don't. Mm-hmm. And especially if you're midlife, you're in your 50s or 60s and maybe even 70s or, or older. It is far from over for you. Yes. It is. It, you are right in the prime of your wisdom, life experience, and convergence in the mm-hmm. spirit. You are a prime target right now to release an epic an epic event and an epic expression of who he is to those around you. So it's like she said, step up and shake it off. Like the old donkey story that was trying to, it was being thrown in the well, right? Yeah. Go to the well. Shook it off and sit on it. And before you knew it, he jumped right out. (laughs) And and look, we can all stay. (laughs) So you're closer than you know. That's right. And maybe just one more shaking it off and ah. you are. (laughs) And we, we can all stay in the the uh, the cesspools of resentment or the pity party pit we can all stay there if we want but guess what you're going to age faster than you ever have and yeah. people will more importantly people are going to miss out on the love specialty that you are yes. stop waiting stop waiting for others to come alongside and do it for you uh, nobody's going to do it for you mm-hmm. what you do is you step up and you start engaging Faith in your and love action. specialty and in, in action and shake off that old stuff that just the weariness and everything and then the others that are called to be with you will be added to you at the appointed times you just yeah. be you you yep. be the you be the real you in oneness with Christ moving forward and all that stuff will begin to file into place snap into yes. place just like Legos, yes. spiritual Legos. Or a domino effect in the good domino way. Domino effect. <laughs> so let's right. just, um, I want to I wanna pray for those um, listening uh, that, have, that have just experienced weariness well, and hope deferred, and hope deferred on the journey. Um, hey, we can all sit in that stuff and remain, but it's up to us. Like David said, I encouraged myself in the Lord. Yes. I stepped up and I encouraged myself. There's something about speaking it out and saying it, I will make it. I'm going yes. forward. I can do this. I mm-hmm. am an expression of who Jesus yeah. is in the earth. I've been refined and honed and developed and I'm growing in maturity. It's my convergent moment. All those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Speak them out by faith, even if you're not feeling it. Yeah. Even if it doesn't seem, it goes contrary to what you've been experiencing. It's important to speak life out, even if you, again, there's been times when we don't feel like it at all. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And we all have those moments, right? When you're tired or you're just going through this battle-weary season. (laughs) Do it anyway. Yes. Do it anyway. And then the feelings will come, right? That's right. Feelings follow focus. So choose what you're focusing on, and that will shift whatever you're feeling. Yeah, exactly. And engage. Yeah. But yeah, you know, too, just really quick, encourage you guys to go back to your prophetic words. If you feel lost and, and have kind of forgotten yourself in the midst of this process and journey go back to your words because it was an invitation from the father to you and and engage back again in that conversation saying you know what father i just i just repent for for putting this aside and not not valuing it like i should or 
or just letting it sit. And I, I want to engage back in the conversation with you again of this prophetic word. What what do you want me to do, Lord? What what can I do? How can I prepare for this? Yeah. And I open my heart back up to it. And and in that moment, grab a journal. And the Lord will start sharing, write down what he shares with you in regards to that prophetic word. Because yeah. he, he wants it. It was his offer. It's like an offer letter to you. And, and you choose to accept it and say, yes, right. that's the first step, right? Yeah, and it's, it, it, it is, it's it really, really important. Because it either it was God or, or it wasn't. And you know when it is. Something bears witness and it rings true. Mm -hmm. And some of you have become just disillusioned to the point where you just say, well, you know, what's the point anyway? I'll just, uh, someday it'll just happen. Or I'll just, here's, here's another mentality through the wilderness journey kind of thing that you, you've been involved in or the development phases is that, you know what, the mentality of, um, hey, Colleen, hey. Hey, uh, you know, I'll just cruise along. Jesus loves me and I'll just check out and go to heaven. Or maybe that's, I'm tired. You know, again, we're missing out on the treasure and so that you other are, people. and so are yeah. others, mm -hmm. if you just decide to check out because it was too hard and too difficult. It, we can all say that, right? We can all say it was hard. Some people have gone through horrific things. I'm not downplaying it. Uh, you know, mentally, the mental battle oh, is, is, is yes. the most difficult, especially when year by year goes by, right? You've, you've hit the 60 mark, now mm. it's 61, oh, now I'm 62, now I'm reaching 65 and it, nothing's happening. So what's the state of yes, your heart? Yes, it is happening. What's the state of your heart? That's what you got to really look at. Are you still open? Are you still keeping it pliable before the Lord and communicating with Him in it? You know, or have you hardened your heart and become numb? Oh, yeah. that's the danger zone. That's a, that's Guard a we were, yourself. And we were just talking We've about that. With that too, but. Well, we were just talking about that with somebody else that, that we know with a family member that's just become just numb. And there's, you know, when you become numb, there's hardly anyone can pull you out of that mm -hmm. except for the Lord. You can try and try and try. But when somebody becomes numb and depressed, uh, man that's that's uh, that's a challenging one so you want to you want to resist that at all yeah. turns now there's a time it, it is true that you may go through a little little seasons of, mm -hmm. of disillusionment or weariness like like to Elijah process through and you got to go through it right yeah. through that storm yeah like Elijah um, when he came to the brook remember that story and and he was actually suicidal he said I want to I want this to end I my life is what, what's the point? Now. Take me now because I'm being chased <laughs> I'm down done. by Jezebel and I'm just weary and nobody listens to me anyway, you know, oh. kind of thing. If you're <laughs> How far can the chip but, but what happened? The Lord sent encouragement to him by the way of food and strength and encouragement. The angel came and said, hey, all right, it's time to get up and And, and you're not the forward. only one, Elijah. There's 12,000 others. 7,000. There's 7,000. But there's still, there's 12,000, 12 million, <laughs> doesn't matter. So if you're, if you're a prophet listening to this, if you have a prophetic call, man, we understand the mm -hmm. mental battles. Yeah. We, we do. We really do. And, and that, that, will, that will hit you from every angle. But it's important to, to realize that, look, um, if, if I don't rise up and shake this off, tell the enemy where to go, of course, but if I don't realize that God has a plan through me and that that he's speaking in such a way uh, that it's all on him anyway it's remember what he said he says to uh, the prophet you know Jeremiah and Ezekiel and, and the rest it says look don't worry if they don't listen to you they're they're actually uh, resisting me it's they're not listening to me ultimately so Anyway, let's, uh, we're going to wrap this up. And so, Father, we thank you. We just yes. encourage. We speak encouragement to all those listening right now. And we say that they will make it. Yes. You will you make will it. You will make it. And that there is a plan. There is a purpose. There is a, an exact, precise thing that God is doing in you for what is yeah. upon us and what's coming. So continue to yield. Know that you're not in trouble with God just because you walked out of a building. There's grace. He's doing something in you to prepare you. Mm -hmm. to uh, not only find the people that you were designed to be with, but also to be the instead. Yeah. And he may want you to go right back in there later, but just let him do that. Yep. All right. So, Father, All we right. thank you for these people. 
our friends and we speak life, yes. life, life. Yes. yes. Grace, grace, grace. <laughs> we'll right. talk soon. Love you all. Love you all. Thank you so much. We'll see you again.